Welcome, I'm Matej and I'm software engineer at Upright. Today I'll be introducing you to a new feature which was released in Upright 1.3, which is relationships. Relationships let you create predictable and secure connections between your data. For those of you who haven't heard about Upright yet, it's a backend as a service which provides you with all the core APIs you might need to build your next web, mobile, or Flutter application. One of the services that Upright provides are Upright databases. Databases let you store data on the server and share them between the users. Relationships in databases let you create connection between those data. Although relationships were possible in Upright already, adding an official support for them makes it much more enjoyable to work with. For example, you can now send one request to get all the relationships and data about those documents. You can also configure behavior for what should happen when a document is deleted. Last but not least, you can select specific data in one request instead of having to select everything. I have installed the latest version of Upright and created a project so we can take a look at the relationships feature. Let's start by creating a database called Staging. Inside our Staging database, let's create a collection called Calendars. Alongside Calendars collection, let's create Events collection. In the Calendars collection, let's define an attribute. This will be a string attribute called Title and it will hold the title of our calendar. Let's make the size to be 42 characters long at max, and let's make it required. Now we can create our first calendar and call it Meetings Calendar. Next, let's switch to the Events collection and create a few attributes here also. Let's create a new string attribute called Name, which will hold the name of our event. This time, let's allow it to be a bit longer, and let's make it required. Lastly, let's create a daytime attribute and let's call it the date. This will tell us the date when the event is happening. Let's also make it required. Now that we have our collection set up, we can create relationships between them. Let's go to the calendars collection and create a new attribute. This will be a relationship attribute. We can select it to be two-way relationship because when we are reading calendars, we want to see all the events. But when we are reading an event detail, we also want to know to which calendar it belongs. Since we are creating a relationship on the calendars, the related collection will be events. The attribute name that will be created on calendars should be events, but the attribute name created on the events should be calendar, because I only want one event to be related to one calendar, but one calendar can have multiple events. From this definition, we know the relationship will be of type one to many. Lastly, we can define what should happen when a document is deleted. Since we are creating a relationship on calendars, when a calendar is deleted, I want all the events to be deleted also. This means we need to cascade the deletion event. Once the relationship is created, we can head to the events and create a new event. Let's call the event onboarding and let's have it later today. Here we can see a relationship attribute called calendar and we can select to which calendar it belongs. Notice it can only belong to one calendar. Once we created a document, we can head back to the calendars and see a relationship working because we have an events attribute and it has one item in it. Let's take a closer look at relationship creation. There are four types of relation you can choose from. One-to-one -one has a good example of people and IDs, because one person can only have one ID, and one ID can only belong to one person. Making one-to-one -one relation ensures this rule. A good example for one-to-many relationship are websites and reviews. One website can have multiple reviews, but the one review can only belong to one website. When creating a website, you would be asked to provide an array of reviews. Similar relation is many-to-one. A good example for many-to-one relation is songs and albums, because one song 
can only belong to one album, but an album can have multiple songs. When creating a song, you will be asked to provide exactly one album to which it belongs. Last relation type is many to many, and good example here are categories and products. You can have product belong to multiple categories, but category can also have multiple products. You can also set up what should happen when a document is deleted. In this case, when we have calendars and events, if we set the deletion to set the attribute to null, when I delete the calendar, all the calendar attributes on the events would be set to null. When I set the type to be cascade, it would mean when I delete the calendar, all the events related to it will also be deleted. Lastly, I can set it to restrict, which will not allow me to delete calendar until there are no relations. I would first need to go ahead and delete all the events related to my calendar. Let's take a look at how we can take advantage of relationships in our application. I have created a vid application and installed TypeScript in it. It generated a main file, which I'm going to delete and start from the scratch. In the upright console, I'll add a new web platform, which will have the name localhost and hostname localhost. In the next step, I'm asked to install upright SDK, which I don't need to do it because I've done that already. Although I'll copy the second code and paste it into my source code in order to import the client of the upright into my application. In the next step, I'm going to copy snippet as well, because here we are creating a new client and configuring it with my endpoint and project ID. We can skip the rest of the steps. Going back to my source code, what we need to do is create connection to the databases. We do that by defining a new variable databases and setting it to be a new instance of the databases class from upright. We need to provide it with a client for the configuration. With the databases created, we can try to get data from our databases. To do that, I create a new variable called response and await a response from the databases method called list the documents. Here we need to provide database ID. To get that, I go to the console and copy it from the staging database. For the collection ID, since I want to read all of my calendars, I'll copy the calendars of collection ID. With that, we should have all the calendars fetched, so let's console.log the response variable. If we go to our application, you can see it's saying there are no calendars, although we created one. This is on purpose, because Upright is secure by default. What we need to do is to go into the calendars collection and under settings, in the permission section, we need to tell that anyone is allowed to read from there. We can update the collection and refresh our application. Now we can see there is one result. Looking at it, we can see our meetings calendar, but events is empty. Although again, we created some events. Going by the same logic, we need to go to the events collection and under settings, we need to add permission for anyone to be able to read them. After updating, we can refresh again and see that the response looks exactly as expected. There are meetings calendars with events under them. What we can also try is go back to the console and going to the events collection, copying the ID of the events and replacing that in our source code. Now we should be getting all the events collection. If I refresh, we can again see one response. This time this is the onboarding event and it is related to one calendar. We can see that because we created two-way relationship. That concludes the product tour of upright relationship. I hope you are as excited about this feature as me and you will give it a try. We are always looking forward to any feedback you have, so if you have some, please comment, join our Discord or create a GitHub issue. Thanks for watching.